This is Mary Had a Little Lamb by Stevie Ray Vaughan, which is a fantastic Texas blues solo, and it's got loads of the Stevie Ray Vaughan trademark licks in it. It's so much fun to play. So let's get to a close-up. I'll do a slow-mo one first of all, and then I'll take you through it one lick at a time. So one lick at a time now. We're starting off with a tone bend, 15th fret of the second string, probably using your third finger. Then we've got this great lick. So we've got a little rake. So the first thing is just going to lay on the thinnest two strings. So you can do up picks with mutes. And then the third finger on the 14th fret of the third string. Tone bend, release, flick off, 14, 12, flick off on the D string. Okay, now we've got a classic Stevie Ray Vaughan. So this one using pick and fingers. So pick is playing the lead note. So 14th fret on the 4th string, 12th fret on the 3rd string, 14 to 15 slide. Then 14, 12, 14, 14. All that last part's obviously on the third string. And what you're going to do is put a little bar with your first finger, and you're going to use a finger, I'm using my third finger, but you can use whatever you like, to play the thinnest string at the same time. Okay? One and two and three. Finishing with these two notes here, the two twelves. A little bit of kind of, a little bit of vibrato on there, I think. Um, and then we've got this just basic pentatonic. Okay, 14th fret on the 4th string, 14th to 12th flick off, still on the 4th string. Back to the 14, a pair of 12s on the 2nd and 3rd strings, and then 14 to 12 flick off on the D string. Okay, now we've got this really, another classic Stevie Ray thing. So we've got a first finger bend on the 12th fret, the 4th string. It doesn't go all of the way up, it's like a blues curl, but really, it's one of his trademark things, you want to make sure you cop that. And that's 12th fret, 4th string. 14th fret twice on the D string, still the 4th string. 12th fret to 14th fret bend on the, that's the third string. Then, uh, first finger, 12th fret, second string. Then you play that note again, 15th fret, okay, which is on the, uh, on the second string still with the third finger. And then you want to do a semitone bend before the first finger on the 12th fret of the thinner string. And then the 12th fret on the B string. It's a really tasty little lick, that. Then here. So 
so cool. 12th fret, 15th fret, semitone fret, so it'll sound like that, the 16th fret. 12th, 12th. Such a great little line there. Anyway, um... Okay, just nice pentatonic. 12, 15 on the second string. 12, 15, 12 on the thinner string. Then we got the little drag again, the backwards rake. To ending on two notes, uh, twice played the 14th fret on the G string. 12th fret, 14 to 12 flick off on the D string, 14th fret on the 5th string, then we're going up the minor pentatonic scale, so 12th fret on the, and the 14th fret on the D string, 12th fret, 14th fret on the G string, the 3rd string, tone bend, 1st finger in the 12th fret of, the, of string 2, 3rd finger on the 15th fret, of still on string two, then it's going to step up one fret to the sixteenth, step up one to the seventeenth fret. Okay, so from the backwards rake, okay, really nice little transition to get right up there, there into box two. Drake. Okay, and then we've just got 16th fret on the 3rd string, 15th fret to 17th fret on the 2nd string. Okay, now it's going to get a little bit tricky in a second. Rhythm as well, so 4 and 1, 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... Okay, and then we've got this last note, the beginning of the next phrase, 15th fret on the thinner string, 17th fret tone bend back to the 15th fret without a bend and now this is the tricky bit okay so 15th fret first finger tone bend release it and then 17th fret on the second string now that's really difficult i must admit i really struggle to and i've got big blisters on my fingers from practicing that one little bit it's such a nice lick though okay It's a quite a common thing for Stevie Ray Vaughan to do, but he had really strong hands and thick strings. God knows how he did it, actually, but uh, he did. So if you really struggle, you can go and then shift and then move back to that note at the end. But, I mean, it doesn't sound as good. Okay, now we've got this lovely little triplet line. Okay, so this one starting 15th, 17th, tone bend, 17th, 15th with a little curl, 17, 15 on the B string, on the second string, then third finger is going to move to the 16th fret of the third string, 16, 15, 14, there's a little pause there, and then the last little, it's kind of a little tag on the end, 12 on the third string still, and then 14 on the fourth string, back to the 12. Okay, just again, take it slow. Okay, use a little rake there for the 12, 14, and then a down, up, and then down on the 12. They're kind of a little bit hidden in the track, but uh, you, you can hear them if you do it, listen to it nice and slow. Okay, then we've got... Okay, this one's a, it'd be a little bit tricky. Uh, 14th to 12th flick off, 12th fret on the 5th string, then up the pentatonic, 12, 14 on the D string, 12, 14 bend on the 3rd string, the G string, now we've got this little triplet. Okay, 
real classic Stevie Ray Vaughan lick, this one. So 12th fret on the B string, 12th fret on the thinnest string, on the E string, back to the B string, 15th fret on the B string, and back to 12. Now third finger goes down on the 14th fret of string one, and then we do a hammer on flick off from the 12th fret first finger, second finger going down in the 13th fret, then third finger in the 15th fret, second string, then we're back to the 12th fret thinner string, 12th fret second string, 12th fret thinner string. <laughs> God, that's a, that's a mouthful, isn't it? A lot easier, I think, if I just play it slowly a couple of times, so... Okay, make sure you get that rhythm. One triplet, two triplet, three E triplet, four triplet. Okay, you need to be able to do these things slowly if you're going to learn to do them fast, you know, so... Okay, make sure you've got that under your fingers first. Now the next phrase is also quite tricky to get into. It's still triplets, but there's something awkward about having these, all of these twelves, and then going straight into this bend. So this second bar, we're starting with a 15th fret bend. It's just like a little curl really, not a full bend. Then 12th fret on string one, 12th fret on string two. 14th fret string 3 tone bend, back to 12th fret on string 2, 12th fret on string 1. Now this part, it's very likely Stevie's using his third finger here and doing the bend with his second finger. I find it a lot easier to use my uh, little finger on the 15th fret. The third finger goes down the 14th fret on the third string, does a tone bend. Then you play the second string again, because you've left your finger down, then release the bend, and then 12th fret, still on the G string, finishing the phrase on the 14th fret of the D string, or 4th string. Okay. Combined with the previous phrase, Okay, we're going to continue the triplets thing going now. Okay, so 12th fret, we're playing little double stops now, so it's the B and the uh, G string, second and third strings. 14, uh, that's the 12th fret, using a little bar with the first finger. Then 14th fret, barring with the third finger. Then a little bend. Okay. Bend, release, flick off the third finger so you get that 12th fret of the third string. Then you're going to play the root note, the, the 14th fret of the D string. Back to the two 12s, back to the root note again, flatten it down to play the two 14s, the two 12s, then 14 12 flick off on the D string, and then 14th fret on the A string. So. Again. Okay, the next bar. Okay, 12, 14, 14 on the D string, on the fourth, the fourth string. The two 12s, back to the root note. The two 14s, the two 12s, back to the root note. Two 14s, two 12s back to the root note, and then the 12s. Okay, that bar. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Okay, those two bars together. Now, 
one, a couple more beats of this craziness. Okay, 14s, bend, release, back to the 12s, root note, and back to the 12s. And then the time feel kind of changes. So that little section, suddenly cuts to these nice eighth notes. Okay, so this is standard blues lick, 14th fret tone bend, 12th fret on the B string on string two, on string one, back to string two, 15th fret tone bend. Then release it to the 12th fret, and 12th fret again. Now we've got these lovely bends coming up at the 15th fret. So we start 12th fret 2nd string, 15th fret, and then a tone bend. Pick, release, pick, release, pick, and then another bend. You'll have to listen to it to try and get exactly the phrasing and the, uh, and the melody of that. Quite a tricky little phrase, great fun to play, and once you get it, oh, my fingers are starting to hurt as well. This is a, this is a long lesson with a lot of string bends in it. Anyway, uh, we're nearly there. So after that little bit, we've got this lovely release. Bit of a Hendrix thing going on there. So this is releasing the 15, 12th fret, that's both on the second string, 14th fret, bend, release, 12th fret, that's all on the third string, of course down to the root note, 14th fret on the 4th string, 12th fret, 14th fret on the 3rd string, tone bend, and then straight to the 12th fret. Okay, now we've got that little blues move again. Okay, the 14th fret, tone bend, 3rd string, 12th fret, 2nd string, 1st string, back to 2nd string. Now this last little phrase, he mixes up the rhythm, he's working in 16th notes, so make sure you listen to the rhythm of that closely on the record. Starts with a little slide, 15 to 16, then 12th fret, 12th fret, 12th fret, that's on the 1st string to the 2nd string and back again. Then 15th fret, tone bend on the 2nd string, then 12th fret on the thinner string, 12th fret on the 2nd string, 15th fret, 12th fret, over to the 3rd string, tone bend on the 14th fret, release, 12th fret, 14th fret, 12th fret on the D string, and then uh, the pair of 12s, which is the B string and the G string twice. Let me just run through that bit one more time, so 15 to 16, 12, 15 bend, 12, 15, 12, 14 bend, release, 12, 14, 12 on the D string. Then we got that little double stop, then 14th, the root note, 14th fret on the 4th string, 12th fret, 14th fret on the 5th string, back to 12th fret. We play that note twice, and then we're going to slide with the 3rd finger from the 14th to the 12th. Play the 10th fret with the 1st finger, and then 12th to 14th hammer on. Okay, that phrase. <laughs> Such a lovely phrase. the low E, then the pair of 12s, that's the B string and the G string, 2nd and 3rd strings, again 14th fret with the 3rd finger little bar, back to 12th fret, 14, 12, 14 on the D string, and we're there. 
Well, I really hope this solo keeps you busy for a little while. It certainly did for me. There's a load of different things to steal. That really nice idea of peddling the root note while you're playing a solo underneath, the, the two-string bends, the change-ups in the rhythms, you know, it's fantastic. Um, definitely what you want to be doing is playing along with the original recording at a slower speed. It's just, that's what I had to do as well, but especially toward the end, there's the 16th note bit. It gets a little bit tricky if you're trying to do it on your own, even though I'd transcribed it myself and was reading my own tab. It was, I still wasn't quite getting the feel right until I started playing along with the record again, you know, and then it, it was like, oh yeah, that's how it's kind of phrased, because it's not mathematically perfect, this stuff, but, and, and that's the beauty of it, you know. So definitely playing it nice and slow, making sure you extract the ideas as well, and taking each little phrase and using it as a lick and then incorporating it into your own improvisations. That's how you'll make the most of this solo. Much better to be able to use these phrases in your own stuff to improvise than just be able to play that as a set piece, as, as great fun as it is to learn it that way. I, I think there's a lot more to be gained from it. So uh, I really hope you enjoy it. And uh, if you like what I do, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Come and say hello on Facebook and Twitter and uh, see you on the website. There's plenty more of these uh, blue solos coming up. So check on the website to see what the latest ones are. And I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.